Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Tabansi. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. Where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, or entertainment. And when we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today we got a very interesting show for you guys. Uh, but before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you're not following us on Instagram, be sure to follow me. My name is Charles Tabansi, uh, C-T-A-B-A-N-Z. That's my IG handle. Also, follow us on Dreamers Pro. On Instagram, it's called Dreamers Pro. And also make sure you, ch- you follow the Dreamers Pro podcast that we have linked in the comments section below. So let me get into this story uh, here. Let me get into this story here. Um, as you guys are aware, Deion Sanders, you know, Deion Sanders uh, is turning into a public figure uh, unlike anything that I've seen in a very long time. And I'll tell you why. The reason I'm saying that is because Dion seems to represent so many different things to so many different people. On the one hand, he's a former professional NFL player, Hall of Fame NFL player. On the other hand, he's a college football coach and he represents, you know, a football team, the Colorado Buffaloes. So he has that role that he plays. On the other hand, he seems to be this magnet this marketing genius and he plays that role and then he's also turning into he also starting to develop this public persona with various people that love him and hate him for a plethora of reasons i mean if we follow the conversation surrounding Deion sanders for example ever since his team got blown out by oregon it's been one thing has been about what the coach said for uh, Oregon, what he said about him. Then they've been talking about some of the things that Deion Sanders has been saying. They were talking about his impact on college. I mean, there's so many things. And when I sit back and think about it, I'm like, there's so many opinions about Deion Sanders right now. Another example, the thing that uh, some of the comments that Oregon's coach had to make, you had people like, uh, Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp, who found absolutely nothing wrong with it. Then you had a Skip Bayless who took it in a totally different direction. And they're still talking about the same person. So to me, it's such a multi layer conversation. But nevertheless, there's still people out there that are unhappy with what Deion Sanders is representing right now, right? And one of those people um, is Jason Whitlock. We've produced about two or three shows discussing some of the things that Jason Whitlock, uh, has been saying about Deion Sanders. And the vast majority of it has been insulting, has been extremely negative, And dare I say, in some cases, mean spirited. Jason Whitlock has done everything from questioning the way Deion Sanders dresses, uh, his masculinity, He's even questioned his religious background or foundation, rather. He's then even t- taken it as far to question, uh, to questioning his parents' style. So what happened? The Buffaloes dropped that game in a very em- embarrassing way. And I knew one of the people that was going to capitalize on Dion's failure in that game was going to be Jason Whitlock. I already knew this going in. Ever since he lost, he's been producing various shows about it. But yesterday, he produced a particular show that was aimed at Deion Sanders. And in this particular show, he comes in there and he starts to express his frustration at people who are still, for whatever reason enamored by what Deion Sanders is representing. And basically he goes into this monologue of why he is sick and tired of what Deion Sanders is doing to the point where he's even upset at the way Deion Sanders conducts himself, even with the way that he dresses. I mean, is it, it, we're at this point with, with uh, Jason Whitlock, so what we want to do is we want to play some of his comments here. Not not too much of it. We, we don't want to, um, you know, we don't want you guys to pass out from all of this nonsense that he's speaking. We want to play a little bit of it and then we want to come back and react to what he had to say. Take a listen to what Jason Whitlock had to say here. The thing that's interesting to me, 
and I know me and you are going to disagree on this. I didn't actually have a problem with Dion after the Oregon game. I actually thought he handled himself well, except for one thing when he said, beat me now. It's not about you. I'm with you all the way. It should be get us, get us now. He made it a little bit too much about himself. But in terms of the way he's handling this, he's the one guy that's not whining and crying the way Ryan Clark and the rest of these guys are. Steve, anytime a grown man comes into a press conference, and I'm talking about a grown man, wearing sunglasses, and you're in interacting with other people in the media, and you don't take those sunglasses off, th th that's, you've already diminished yourself and already, you're a kid, you're, it's WWE, it's wrestling, it, it's a show, it's a shtick. That this whole deal of, of Ryan Clark, well, that's the way he's always been. Dion's just being himself. No Jason. grown man should try to conduct himself the same way at 56 that he did at 19 or 20 or 25 or even last week. You're supposed to evolve, and particularly as a leader. The, the, the whole primetime persona, he needs to leave that in the rearview mirror, and we need to quit defending. Well, he's always been this way. He's oh. always been over the top, and, and okay. You know what? I've been fat for a long time. Should people just say, oh, Jason, don't lose any weight. You've always been fat. No, get better. Do better. Jason, I will say this. There's a large part of what you say that I do not disagree with. But you know what? I like the WWE persona he's bringing to college football. I think he's actually made it a lot of fun. He's creating rivalries with everyone that he comes across. I I've never actually been interested in an Oregon-Colorado game. Even when the programs, when both of them were at higher ebbs, if they would have played, and I think they played in a bowl game, the Cotton Bowl, like 20-some-odd years ago or longer, I didn't really care. Uh, I will say this. Last Saturday at 1230, that was the one game that we really focused on at Football Palooza. I actually enjoy what Dion is bringing because you either love him or you hate him. And we, you, I actually think the game needs more of that in its current form. I give him credit for that. He's well, made us care a little bit more. He has made it more interesting. But, and, and so as a sports fan that wants to be entertained, he's made it more interesting. I, I'll give you that. As a person that, and, and this, I'm gonna get into this conversation with Royce in detail. As a person that is allegedly modeling behavior that other coaches or other leaders should follow. And this, we've had RG3 and all the, you can be cool and be the coach. And, and, and modeling behavior for young black men or just men in general. This is not a good model of leadership. This is not a good model of discipleship. And there are too many kids because unless you have Dion's talent, running around with Dion swagger, looks real foolish on you. And do you know how many people have Dion's talent? One, Dion. And there won't, Travis Hunter doesn't have it, Shiloh doesn't have it, Shadour doesn't have it, he's not gonna recruit a player onto the Colorado team that has it. So it, it just doesn't work. And so all these, and, and, and I mean, it gets personal for me, and again, I'll have this conversation with Royce, but there's a bunch of young black boys that are being led to believe yeah, swagger is what you need. And you need to be over the top and confident and cool, and that's going to move you ahead in life. Humility is what we all need. Grown men, young men, old men, top babies in the womb, everybody, they need humility. And, and so I'll, I'll leave it there. But, and then the other thing that Ryan Clark, but I want to move on. But Ryan Clark, he's entitled to be this way. <sighs> Entitlement. Well, okay. He's entitled. No, he's not. And no one's entitled well, to be that arrogant. I I'm just sorry. Jason, These are grown I people. Counter. Ryan Clark's got kids. What? Go ahead. So you heard what Jason Whitlock had to say. You know what I what I'm failing to understand is why Jason is so worked up over Deion Sanders. I don't know why he's getting so worked over this guy, worked up over this guy. I don't know. I don't know why it bothers him so much. 
I don't understand what his issues are with Deion Sanders wearing glasses and going as far as saying people only people that are not serious will have a conversation with their glasses on. I'm like why 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 does what what does his glasses have to do with anything that he's doing as a football coach? I've never seen anything like that. He then goes on to call the man a kid. Jason Whitlock is a very interesting person. He will be insulting someone, but he disguises it as some type of truth. Like, no, it's not that I just insulted you. What I just said, what, what, what I just said was the truth. And if you take it as an insult, you shouldn't because it's the truth. How can you call a grown man? How old is Deion Sanders? Just let me find out. How old is Deion Sanders? Deion Sanders. How old is he? Deion Sanders looks like he's in his fifth. Deion Sanders is 56 years old. In that audio, he's calling the guy a kid. A 56-year-old man, four years away from being 60, he's calling the man a kid. Talking about what he's doing is childish. Talking about the fact that Dion has not shown any progression and maturity over his life, over his lifetime. Are you guys aware that Deion Sanders is a man, a married man, with five children? Five children. This guy is calling a married man with five kids a child. He's saying that this guy needs to grow up. He needs to become a professional. What do you mean become a professional? I thought Deion Sanders was already a professional. He came. He, he, he started his career as a football coach. I mean, as a, as a football player, he played in his 20s. Then as he gets older, he starts getting older. He becomes a father. He gets married. He starts having kids. He starts raising these kids. These kids are now at the point where they're now turning into adults. And then some of them find themselves on the way. Do you know how much of a fantastic job you have to do as a, as a father to put your children in a position where they could possibly end up being just as successful or even more successful as you? The guy's talking about he's acting like a kid. The man has created a legacy for himself and he's putting his children in a position to succeed. And you're talking about this. You're talking about Deion Sanders needs, Deion Sanders needs to grow up. You know, some of the shows that, we, that we've been producing on Jason Whitlock, I've been reading this reoccurring comment, which is a lot of people believe that Jason is jealous of Deion Sanders, that he's jealous of him. And I never paid too much attention to it because it seemed like a generic comment. But the more I think about it, it's either there's some jealousy here or there's some type of resentment that's taking place here. This is beyond football. This is beyond sports. All of these things that are being said are personal. What you didn't see in the video, I mean, the audio that we played was that in the video, he was actually having physical reactions. Like he was genuinely bothered. Like he was, he was, he was his head was like this and he was curled up. I mean, he was visibly disturbed at Deion Sanders speaking, his voice, the things that he's doing. And my question is why? You look at a man that is extremely successful, almost successful at anything that he's attempted at baseball at football. Now with coaching and you're sitting there finding ways to tear him down. And it begins to make me feel like you're angry that you were not able to attain the level of success that this guy's attained. This sounds like a flat out hater. It sounds like a flat out hater to me, to me. And we're going to get to it in, an, in another show, but for, for Jason to be going so hard at Deion Sanders with all of the things that are happening, it's incredible. It's incredible why Deion bothers you to that point. You're not even critiquing him as a coach. You're now critiquing him as a person, as a human being. 
You're talking about, oh, you don't want kids to grow up and feel like he's a role model. My, my, my brother, my brother, man, listen. Listen. You would have more respect if you were a better role model than, than the person you're critiquing. You would have way more respect. The man, Deion Sanders, is a very serious man. To be a married man with children, you're a very serious person. A father that takes care of takes care of his responsibilities that's a very serious person a father that is present in their child's life is a very serious person that ain't no play play thing and to minimize that because you have some issue with him some issue that i don't understand really because we're still we, we still haven't gotten to the to the to the crux of it is is, is shameful to say that this guy's not an example and all you can hold on to is he, hey, he wears hats and he wears glasses. The guy is a damn good father. If he ain't anything else, he's a damn good father. At least be in a position where you can say, let me show you my kids and my family and how I'm doing it and how you should be doing You're not even doing that. So where you feel like you have the basis to be critiquing him, to me is just, to me, to, to me is, it, that's the part I can't even fathom. What basis do you have on this subject? It's like people without kids telling people how to raise their kids. Really? And you have no kids? You got a lot of audacity to do that. That's the quickest way to turn people off is to tell them how to raise their kids on top of the fact when you don't even have kids. Bro, stop. These are my thoughts. Whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts in the comments. We'll catch you on the next show. Peace.